good morning good morning to participants from israel and good afternoon to the participants from sri lanka uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, hello everyone welcome to this webinar opportunities in the israel market from edb uh, at the very beginning uh, will be your moderator and prasanna jayasinghe deputy director market development of edb i will moderate i will do the moderate the webinar today welcome to all of you in uh, in room and thank you for joining us uh, first uh, introduce uh, the, the this event today this webinar will roll out under three main parts as inaugural session technical information sharing session and uh, question and answer session there are three sessions and we have allocated 50 minutes for inaugural session 50 minutes for technical information session and 10 minutes for q and a session yes uh, for the uh, now uh, with this overall understanding i cordially invite mr suresh d mel chairman and chief executive sri lanka export development board to deliver the opening opening remarks thank you thank you prashant can you hear me okay uh, yes sir yeah yes His Excellency Varuna Vilpatha, the Ambassador, Embassy of the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka in Tel Aviv, Israel, distinguished resource persons from Israel, Mr. O. Nehustan, Business Development Executive, and E. E. N. International Relations Division, Federation of Israeli Chamber of Commerce, uh, Advocate. Anak Bernstein, re, uh, chairperson Israel Sri Lanka Chamber of Commerce and vice president Israel Asia Chamber of Commerce, business leaders, potential exporters from Sri Lanka, ladies and gentlemen, good day to you all. It gives me great pleasure to join with you today at this informative webinar on opportunities in the Israel market representing the Sri Lanka Export Development Board. I would like to start by thanking all of the partners that collaborated in organizing this event. My special thanks goes to His Excellency the Ambassador for organizing this event together with the Federation of Israel Chambers of Commerce and Israel. and the israel sri lanka chamber of commerce israel asia chamber of commerce sri lanka has close trade relationships with israel an israeli business delegation also have visited colombo and this will be a yet another step in promoting bilateral trade relations between sri lanka and israel this informative webinar is organized as a short term strategy of export promotion the objective of this webinar is to create awareness among the business community in sri lanka and make a platform for them to explore new business opportunities available in the israeli market israel has become a cutting edge center of the high tech and scientific industries in the global markets The signing of free trade agreements with the major economies in the world allows investment and trade to flourish. Israel has global leaders in scientific and medical research, computer and electronics technology, biotechnology, agrotechnology, and many other fields. Sri Lanka considers Israel as a very important economic partner. There is a vast untapped potential in trade for both the countries to explore. for mutual benefit i also wish to comment on the friendly relations we always had with israel israel was the 20th largest trading partner to sri lanka in 19, in 2021 and israel was the 31st sourcing sourcing or import destination of sri lanka for the same year total export value from sri lanka to israel was us dollars 128 Uh, 0.7 million, and total imports from Israel to Sri Lanka was US dollars 99.8 million in 2021. The total trade between the countries stood at <clears throat> US dollars 228 million in 2021, 
with the average growth rate of 8.5% during the last five years. There was a positive trade balance for Sri Lanka, which stood at US dollars 28.9 in 2021. Sri Lanka's main export products to Israel were diamond, diamonds, fish products, tea, made up textile articles, pneumatic and re-threaded tires, rubber tires and tubes, uh, coconut based products, oil and oil, and the apparel sector. Sri Lanka's main imports from Israel were yarn and other textile articles, electrical and electronic products, processed vegetables, fruits and juices, chemical products, plastics, and woven fabric. As per the International Trade Center trade potential information, there is a considerable untapped export potential for Sri Lankan products, mainly in apparel, fishery, tea, spices, and processed food sectors in the Israeli market. There is a US dollar 105 million remaining total untapped potential in individual products. Therefore, we will be able to open up new avenues of trade between, two country, between the two countries in various sectors. Strengthening of bilateral trade and industrial and technological cooperation with Israel is a top priority for us. I hope this event will pave the way for the participants to know the information on trade and investment opportunities. And I strongly believe that Sri Lanka's rapidly growing marketplace and Israeli's complementary technologies create a synergy that will no doubt enhance the overall mutual cooperation and trade volume between our two countries. As always, the Export Development Board, EDB, is committed to facilitate business community in both countries to develop and create business linkages. I extend my appreciation and thanks to His Excellency the Ambassador for arranging this timely event with us. I also thank the eminent panel of members for their resource contribution. I'm hopeful that all participants will have a fruitful day of awareness on how to take forward our trade and investment relations with Israel. Finally, I wish you to have a fruitful session ahead. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman, for your uh, the, the, the background information and welcome note. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Now, I would like to invite His Excellency Varuna Vilpata, Ambassador of Sri Lanka in Israel for his remarks. Hi, Bowen. Shalom. And uh, um, good morning to everybody. And I'm, uh, I'm happy that uh, the embassy was able to organize the, uh, the co-organize this uh, webinar today with, uh, uh, with the EDB and, uh, and in collaboration with uh, our long-standing partners, uh, um, Sri Lanka Israel Chamber of Commerce and uh, Federation of Israeli Chamber of Commerce in Israel. Um, um, as you know, the Israel is an important market for Sri Lanka, and even though the market is a relatively um, small market in terms of population, it's just uh, over nine million, uh, nine million inhabitants. But uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the majority of the population here is uh, middle class and upper middle class. Uh, uh, belongs to middle and upper middle class. So their purchasing power is very high. Um, the the uh, per capita income is, uh, in, in 2021, uh, um, the per capita income has uh, reached over 50,000 US dollars, which is on par with uh, the developed uh, Western uh, European countries. So, so the purchasing power is, uh, very high uh, in, in the Israeli uh, Israeli market. So, in in order to penetrate into the market, I I think uh, it is important for Sri Lankan exporters to uh, take part at uh, various trade fairs and exhibitions uh, 
taking place in Israel. Unfortunately, last two years, uh, 2020 and 2021, uh, uh, there were no, no such events uh, held in uh, Israel due to the COVID pandemic situation. And, uh, and, uh, and also this year, due to, uh, due to the difficult uh, economic situation in Sri Lanka, I don't think uh, uh, our, our exporters will be able to take part. Uh, but I, I still encourage uh, uh, the Sri Lankan exporters to take part in uh, regular uh, trade fairs and exhibitions in Israel, maybe uh, from next year onward, with, with hopefully with the better economic conditions uh, in Sri Lanka. And uh, as, uh, as uh, Mr. Chairman explained, uh, that uh, there is a huge potential uh, in the Israeli market for Sri Lankan exporters, like in the areas of, uh, mainly in the areas of tea, apparel, uh, fishery products, food and beverages, uh, spices, electrical and uh, electronic uh, component, IT, BP, uh, BPM, and uh, personal protective uh, uh, equipment. Uh, uh, as as the pandemic uh, situation still. Uh, 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 making uh, uh, troubles in, in in the Israeli society, so this PPE sector will will remain uh, a potential area. Uh, 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 with that, uh, and and also um, uh, we collaborate with uh, uh, Dr. Anat and uh, Mr. Orr uh, uh, in many uh, many events we have organized. Uh, several events during last uh, two years in collaboration with these two chambers uh, for Sri Lankan exporters. Uh, and, and this is one of the event. And, and uh, uh, embassy always uh, stand ready to assist our exporters to uh, access the Israeli market. There are various uh, uh, ways uh, that we collaborate with uh, the Israeli chambers in finding uh, trade opportunities for Sri Lankans and uh, uh, Sri Lankan exporters. And, and, uh, uh, and we, continue, we will continue to do that. And uh, hopefully this session will be a useful session for, for the uh, Sri Lankan exporters. With that, uh, I conclude my remarks and uh, uh, leave the floor to our distinguished panelists to make their presentations. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Excellency, for the remarks. Uh, you, you give us the uh, insights of the uh, uh, opportunities for the Sri Lankan exporters for uh, initiate uh, uh, our exports to Israel market. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we now move into the technical information share sharing session. This is a very most uh, important part of the webinar for all participants. Please uh, welcome our first presenter, Mr. O. Nehustan. Yeah. He uh, has engaged various fields of, uh, of social and public sector as a consultant, a senior emissary in North England, CFO and of, of, of one of the non-government political organization as well. Uh, as the first part of the technical information sharing session. I cordially invite Mr. O. Neustrand, Business Development Executive, International Relations Division, Federation of Israeli Chamber of Commerce to deliver the presentation. Boan. Hi, Boan. Thank you. Hi, Boan. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Mr. Prasanna Jain Singh, His Excellency, Mr. Varuna Wilpata. Thank you very much for the introduction. Our very close partner. And, uh, and of course, Mr. Suresh Dimel, thank you very much for having me here to, to present a little bit um, of information about the FICC, the Federation of Israeli Chambers of Commerce. Uh, the following 15 minutes, I will try to tell you as much as possible about the Israeli market, uh, Israel as a market in general, some macroeconomic uh, data, and of course, about the Federation of Israeli Chambers of Commerce. But first of all, uh, I would like to thank our partners at the embassy and again, His Excellency uh, Varuna 
I think that there, from my experience, and I work with a lot of embassies and a lot of commercial department and trade promotion agencies in the Asia Pacific, which is my domain here with the Federation of Israeli Chambers of Commerce. Uh, I can tell you that I don't think anyone works as hard and as diligently on promoting their economy and promoting their export like the Sri Lankan embassy here in Israel. We get uh, vast opportunities, a lot of information requests and opportunities to take part in events uh, disproportionate to uh, the amount of trade. And I think one day your hard work uh, will be in right perspective and right proportions to uh, the actual trade because the trade will increase, no doubt, with your excellent work. So I have to commend you for that on this opportunity. Um, and, and now I shall start. I will share my screen just a moment, please. So I will start by telling you a little bit about the FICC. The FICC, the Federation of Israeli Chambers of Commerce, is the umbrella organization for Israel's regional chambers of commerce. It was founded in 1919. Israel was only established in 1948. So you can see that there was already a plethora of business opportunities uh, here before the establishment of the State of Israel. We are the home to over 5,000 companies, including external organizations. We reach around seven or 8,000 uh, legal entities. Um, we have over 12 people who are the sector heads uh, in the FICC. And what they do is they represent the interests of different industry sectors uh, for the decision makers. When there is new legislation, new economic reform, new taxation, the FICC represents the interests of the business owners uh, in front of the government and other entities. And that's what we are here for. My role at the FICC has nothing to do with that in all uh, honesty. What I do is to promote business opportunities for our members. So if we are talking about over 5,000 companies, they have different needs. Sometimes they are looking to uh, expand their import. Sometimes they are looking to open new markets abroad. And we in the international division help them do that. How do we do it? We have wonderful friends like the Embassy of Sri Lanka and Israel. We work with commercial attaché and uh, uh, Mr. Mahesh that we worked very, very closely. He's already back in Sri Lanka and we wish him uh, uh, best returns and good luck on his next position because we worked very, very closely together. Um, the international division specifically, we host delegations, we uh, create seminars, uh, we advise our partners on regulation, about customs, about different import uh, queries that they have. Um, we are the point of contact in Israel for uh, any commercial department from any uh, foreign embassy. Uh, we have a, a, a business data center and uh, we have also a business opportunity system, which I will share with you momentarily. What you see here is a print, is a print screen, just a shot of our business opportunity uh, platform. Over here, you can see just for the sake of the example, I've, I chose uh, another country in Asia, Vietnam, um, and our members can access this database and see all the different opportunities that foreign companies have advertised. Sometimes they want to export to Israel, sometimes they are interested in a joint venture, sometimes they want to resource services or tech uh, uh, products from Israel, and we of course help them with that. This service is open only for our members, but any foreign company is able to uh, publish their offer with us. And as uh, our dear friend, His Excellency Varuna knows, we have a template form that is sent to the companies for the companies to fill out and mention their distinguishing uh, characteristics, what makes them special in the market, their key advantages, and what type of partner they are seeking for in Israel. We receive that form and we turn that into a business opportunity that is relevant uh, and open to all our members to see. On the other side, I encourage you to go on this link later on. This is the FICC's homepage in English. Um, this allows any foreign company and anyone around the world to see the business opportunities from Israel. As you can see here, the country of origin in Israel. We allow our members and enable them and encourage them to advertise business opportunities to trade with foreign companies. Um, so I encourage you before you advertise an opportunity with, through our system and before you contact the embassy of Sri Lanka and Israel 
you are very welcome to go on to this website and see if there are any opportunities that are already relevant to for your industry and for your sector. If it's cosmetics, if it's uh, fibers, if it's textile, if it's auto parts, I'm sure you can find existing companies that might be of interest in your products. I'll quickly move on um, after we discuss the FICC. And uh, one more thing, the, the FICC is by far the largest trade organization uh, in Israel. Uh, there are a few other organizations in our ecosystem, but we are the home to all the main importers, retailers, wholesalers, all the main supermarket shops in Israel are members with the FICC for all of the different services that we can provide to them. Um, it doesn't always mean that we can get in touch with any company. So if you have mapped out a company and you think, oh, I want to reach this company, we might very well be able to help you. And if they are not members, then I'm not sure that we'll be able to connect you because the, of data security and data uh, uh, protection uh, regulation in Israel. But if they are members, then we always are happy to get in touch with them, tell them, hello, we've been in touch with a lovely company from Sri Lanka, and they would like to get in touch with you and then make the connections uh, for you. Now let's talk about the Israeli market. Why is it good to export to Israel? And this is in general. This is not just for Sri Lanka exporters, but in general, just a few characteristics of the market in our economy. So first of all, it's a strong economy. It, has, uh, it is the only OECD, only developed country in the world that is expected to double its size by 2050. That means that the existing market, as His Excellency the Ambassador mentioned before, we have around 9.5 million people in Israel. It is expected to double uh, by 2050. It's a sophisticated market. We are a market of early adopters of technologies. So if you have apps like TikToks or any other, uh, not just social networks, but actual tech uh, products and services, uh, there is a very good chance that Israel will see them and receive them uh, before other countries in the region, just like in the United States. We have a very strong purchasing power. Our currency is very strong. So if you can see around the world that the Euro is dropping, the US dollar is dropping, uh, almost all currency, currencies are now not in a very stable state. There is inflation uh, in Israel and it's increasing just like the rest of the countries around the world. But the Israeli shekel, that's our local currency, is a very strong one uh, and it helps our economy to import uh, more cheaply. We have a good business sector, which we will touch on, uh, culture, sorry, which we will touch on uh, later on. And it's important to say that Israel is a mature market and many sectors and many foreign companies are active in Israel. Uh, it is a complex market and a very competitive one, meaning that there's a lot of Israelis that are looking for new opportunities and many of them are establishing their own business. So before you want to enter the Israeli market, it's important to understand who the local competitors are. And if they import, do they import from Asia? And if they import from Asia, does Sri Lanka, can I as a Sri Lanka business owner, I can offer them a better rate, a better price, a better delivery and better quality. Uh, the market is very dynamic as well. Uh, the structure changes constantly. So the purchasing habits of five years ago are different to the purchasing habits now, especially after COVID, we saw about 9.6 increase of uh, foodstuff and of feed in Israeli households throughout COVID. So from 2020 to early 2022, there was an increase of around 10% in food consumption in Israel in general. Um, roughly 40% of Israel's population is concentrated in the center of Israel. Um, and 70%, as you can see here, is about one hour's drive from Tel Aviv. It's not a very big country. It's around 500 kilometers from top to bottom, and it has a very narrow waist. So we are uh, less than half of the population of Sri Lanka, but in size, we are much less than that. So it is very easy to access and uh, visit different factories, visit different companies. Many of them are located here in Tel Aviv and the Tel Aviv region. Uh, again, just some rough information about the, the country as a whole. Uh, as you can see, we share borders with Egypt, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. I will mention the Abraham Accords later on, but we, of course, as many of you know, have peace agreement both with Jordan and with Egypt, and we trade with them very freely. 
So if there are produce that uh, Sri Lankan exporters are already engaging in business activity with Jordan or Egypt, to do the same with Israel should be uh, quite easy for them. General, as I mentioned before, macroeconomic data, the change in the Israeli GDP has nearly doubled in the last decade. So many countries have shown an increase in their GDP, actually uh, almost all countries across the world from my, my research, but Israel's has almost doubled. The business product has almost doubled. The purchasing power of our citizen is one of the strongest in the world. Uh, the inflation for 2021 with COVID was only 2.8. Now we're talking about after the whole supply chain uh, challenges and after COVID, we're looking at inflation of around uh, 9% maximum, whereas other countries around the world, even uh, European, West European countries, are facing inflation of around 11%. Um, the debt to GDP, as you can see, is around the 60-70% uh, alone. The external debt is only 10.1%. And again, other countries are facing a, a very different figure here that is much larger than 10.1. Uh, and as uh, His Excellency the Ambassador mentioned early on, Israel is a very strong economy. And because of the high-tech sector, it changes the numbers completely. So the average salary in Israel is very, very high. And don't be confused. It doesn't mean that we don't have poverty. It doesn't mean that we don't have uh, infringed populations. It doesn't mean that the school system uh, doesn't mean, need changes. We actually are going to have uh, another election, about the fifth elections in a matter of uh, five, uh, five years, if uh, memory serves. Uh, so years. there's a lot of things. Sorry? Fifth election in three years, less than three years. Right. Uh, so as you can see, there, there is, thank you, Avona. As you can see, the, the, there are things that can uh, be much better. But when it comes to the Israeli economy, it's one of the most stable and one of the most successful in the world. There is a flip side. A few months ago, uh, Tel Aviv was announced to be the most expensive city in the world. It uh, passed Paris, it passed Tokyo, it passed all the other places and all the other capitals that are known to be uh, very expensive. One of the reasons for that is real estate, which is very, very uh, expensive in Tel Aviv and the center of Israel. But again, because of the high-tech boom, because of a lot of American and uh, foreign uh, funds contributing to the success of the startup nation, then the prices go up and it affects all the population as a whole. But again, having said that, it's a strong currency, it's a strong market. We have a, a lot of international brands here, but not everyone makes it in the Israeli market. We only now, KFC, that I'm sure many of you know, for many years, they didn't have any presence in Israel because they tried and failed. Only now, a few more branches are coming up. Starbucks, the renowned uh, coffee chain, they tried to enter Israel over 10 years ago and they did not succeed because the local competitors who know the local market uh, gave them a run for their money and they are the most successful ones in Israel. So actually, for Sri Lankan exporters to tap into the strong Israeli chains it can be coffee chains, it can be textile chains, and especially the supermarkets and, and uh, you know, the, the fashion retailers uh, would, would be a difficult thing to do, but something that can help you uh, succeed in Israel. Very briefly, I will, I will not uh, spend too much time on this, just to give you a general idea of the British business uh, product per sector in Israel. This year was the first year that our trade, that Israel's overall trade in services surpassed Israel's trade of produce and goods. Why is that? Because of the booming tech sector. Because when we are talking about a tech company, it is categorized as services and not as trade of goods and not as agriculture. And because Israel is so successful in trading with its startup uh, companies, its startup and, and tech products, then the service sector in Israel is booming, it's very large, and it surpasses every other sector when it comes to our uh, overall trade. Um, this is just an example of what I told you earlier. And I want to give another, dedicate another minute or two to diamonds. Um, Israel, for historical reasons, 
uh, is one of the leading countries for trading diamonds around the world. Uh, even though we don't really have natural resources, uh, natural gas was discovered ov over the shores of Israel just a few years ago. Before that, the a CIA World Factbook showed that Israel's only natural resource is sand. So it is very different to other countries in the Middle East, as I'm sure you know, very different to countries in Asia and Africa that have uh, natural uh, gems, natural resources, and of course, diamonds. But nonetheless, Israel is one of the biggest uh, traders of diamonds. We have a diamond stock market in Ramat Gan. Um, and there is a lot of trade on gems, which I know is of great interest to many here listening today. Um, this is just to give you a, a run through. We import a lot of the goods. Historically, Israel was an, a, a very agricultural country. When Israel was established, it was based as a, an autarkic, autarkic market. The, Israeli, the Israel, Israel's founders did not want to rely or to be dependent on import of the most basic things such as water and food. Uh, again, more than 70 years have passed since the establishment of Israel, uh, 73 years to be exact, uh, 74 soon. And uh, we are now a service-based country. We import a lot of food, we import a lot of agricultural products, we import a lot of auto car parts, we import a lot of uh, plastics, a lot of machinery and so on and so forth. But with services, again, we are leading exporters of that. Who are the main import partners for Israel? This is just a general understanding. We, more, we import most of what we need from Europe and from Asia. Uh, USA is not a big import partner for the, for the Israeli country, but when you look at the export, uh, the, the, ch the picture changes, almost not the opposite, but the USA is by far our largest export uh, market, followed by the EU and followed by Asia. And Asia is increasing in numbers when it comes to export from Israel. More countries are becoming more developed. There is cooperation around uh, tech solutions, around tech products. There are joint ventures. Uh, companies in Israel and funds are purchasing Asian companies and vice versa. So actually this figure here for me, and I am a little biased, I must admit, but is the most in interesting one and the one that I expect to increase uh, as in the years to come. Um, I've been asked to tell you a little bit about different sectors uh, of industry. I'm afraid I don't have enough time for that and it's not my field of expertise. So I, I did want to give you just a, a taste uh, and you can copy this slide if you wish uh, of the import of goods to Israel in 2021. Uh, this is how it is segmented. And as you can see, machinery and electrical equipment, you can't see here, but electrical equipment also means cellular communication, um, uh, technical components for computers, for televisions, for cameras, and so on. Um, and here, uh, I wanted to show you our overall export relations and import relations uh, with Sri Lanka. So in 2020, we exported to Sri Lanka in the value of 64.2 million US dollars. In 2021, in pandemic, the export increased by a third to 93.8. 2022, it's still a little early, but if you compare the first half of 2021 and the first half of 2022, you can still see a dramatic increase of export from Israel to Sri Lanka. What about the import from Sri Lanka to Israel? So as you can see, in spite of COVID and in spite of the challenges of the international supply chain, from 2020 to 2021, there was an increase of around 20% for trade from Sri Lanka to Israel. In the first half of 2021 and 2022, there was an increase of more than 15% for of trade of goods of goods, not of services, from Sri Lanka to Israel. And I think this is quite astonishing, you know, especially considering the, the political structure in Sri Lanka, the challenges that the country is facing in terms of debt. Your relations with Israel are becoming better and better, and the uh, value of trade shows that. And now very quickly, I want to show you, uh, I'll change the window and show you an Excel sheet.
His Excellency already mentioned this before, but what you can see here, and I apologize that it's mostly in Hebrew, I translated the most important parts. What are the key things that are being imported from Sri Lanka, from Sri Lanka into Israel? So fish, crab and uh, seashells, all of their products is one of the key things that Israel imports from Sri Lanka. Tuna and fish and seafood, uh, some of it canned, some of it fresh, mostly canned goods, it's important to say because it's a very long journey from Sri Lanka to Israel. So a lot of our canned fish come from Sri Lanka. Moving on, uh, some salt and minerals are one of the other sectors that we trade with with Sri Lanka successfully. Tires, shoe soles, and other rubber products are also, this is five, $535 million worth of trade. And gloves also mostly made from rubber is one of the things that Israel imports from uh, Sri Lanka with great success. Textile, seeing as textile is one of the key and leading industries of Sri Lanka. So Israel enjoys your success and uh, textile mostly made of plants such as coconut is also one of the things that we trade with Sri Lanka uh, very successfully. Textile products, as you can see here marked, and last but not least, the gems and jewelry. These are slightly misleading finger, fig, uh, figures. Why is that? Because you can trade with very few gems and very few diamonds, and you have affected the overall figures of trade very dramatically. So this can mean that there are only a handful of players in the Sri Lanka market uh, or Israeli market that import from Sri Lanka. But the volume, the value of trade, is actually very tremendous. Um, I will go back to my presentation before we finish off. These are the major industries of Israel. So we segmented it to traditional industries and advanced industries. And again, I don't want to waste your time just reading the presentation. You're very welcome to do a print screenshot of this. Uh, it's absolutely fine. But these are the main industries that Israel focuses on. As you can see, there is no textile. There is very little agriculture. Um, the machinery is the part that Israel uh, is renowned for, but the very traditional industries that Sri Lanka is an expert of, such as manufacturing and exporting textile and uh, agricultural products, those are complementary to the Israeli market that, as I said before, has moved from traditional industries and, and uh, trade of goods to mostly focusing on services, advanced industries, pharmaceuticals, health tech, biomedicine and biotechnology, and of course, cyber and the high-tech fields, um, as you know. And last but not least, here, uh, just a short image of the progress of the financial agreements that Israel is party to with countries around the world. So the United States is Israel's main partner, uh, both politically and commercially, of course, but not just that. We are signed with Western Europe countries, with Turkey, with, with whom our relationship is only getting warmer and warmer, with Canada, with Mexico, with the European Union, and of course, Central and South American uh, countries as well. And last but not least, before we finish, I wanted to tell you about the Abraham Accords. For many of you, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, and I'm sure many of you already know, the past uh, year, just, uh, just below a year and a half ago, Israel signed Abraham Accords so to, to stabilize and open the relations with several countries, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, the Bahrain, uh, South Sudan, Morocco most recently, and again, roaming relationship with Turkey, with whom we have relationship for um, over two decades. What does that mean for Sri Lankan exporters? It means that the physical gateway into the Israeli market has become much more open and much closer, actually. So now, instead of going from Sri Lanka further south in order to get to the Red Sea into Israel through Elat, Israel's most southern city, now there is a possibility to go from Sri Lanka straight to the UAE, where one of the largest ports around the world exists. And there are already Sri Lankan companies and Indian companies and Asian companies uh, that are focused in the UAE with whom you can trade. They can be your access point into the Israeli market. Soon enough, over 100 long haul flights will come on a weekly basis from the UAE and into Israel. 
those long haul flights will enable Asian exporters from Sri Lanka and other places across uh, Asia to trade with Israel with more ease, faster, and hopefully will lower the cost, the dramatic cost of shipping because you only have the need to go to the UAE and from then on you travel by land or by plane. And that should shorten the distance very dramatically and help Sri Lankan ex exporters. Just very briefly, I won't touch on that because I know the next speaker will be focusing on the following issues. But just to tell you about the Israeli business culture, it's very outgoing, it's very open. In many ways, it is uh, complementary to the Sri Lankan market. It is not rigid. Israelis are always looking for new opportunities, uh, always very dynamic, always very direct, which is often construed as being rude or impolite. Often we do not notice if we have been rude or impolite, because we are very direct. We talk shop, we, are, uh, we negotiate. And uh, again, uh, the next speaker, uh, our dear friend Anat will elaborate on that. Um, that concludes my, my presentation. I want to thank you all once again. I will be here for the Q&A segment as well later. And thank you for your time. Um, uh, I, I would like to say also thank you to our partner, the Israel Asia Chamber of Commerce and Anat with whom, with whom we work very, very closely. The floor is yours, of course. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nehustan, for, uh, thank, for the excellent presentation. Uh, thank you uh, for your insightful information and also uh, to give us uh, our exporters to create um, awareness among you all through the topics such as over, over, overview of the Israel market, macroeconomic data, and Israel business cultures and sectors of uh, collaboration and how to do uh, business with Israel and strategic uh, way of uh, approaching market access. That's very important point for Sri Lankan companies. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Thank you, Mr. Nehustan. For you. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we now move into the part two of the technical information sharing session uh, uh, that experts are very, keen to know the information regarding the Israeli business culture and how to collaborate with this Israeli counterpart and to what extent is it e uh, easy to access the uh, Israeli market. Now, uh, introduce uh, Mrs. Uh, Burstein, I pronounce your name uh, correct, has, uh, uh, that's a, uh, his, her profile is, uh, he has, she has worked for over two decades on the axis of uh, Israel and Southeast Asia. Also, she, she has served as a chairperson of Israel, India, and Sri Lanka chambers. She is the CEO of the Gate to a Business, an investment banking and consultancy firm from a firm at BDO Israel. She is the co-founder of the Agri Better Technologies. She has a lot of experience in various fields of organization in Israel, and she also studied in I, in the CV, I saw the in, in India for the other uh, higher studies in India also. Uh, now we have invited uh, Ms. Uh, Bustin, Chairperson Israel, Sri Lanka Chamber of Commerce and Vice President Israel, uh, brief you on all those factors. Now I cordially invite the guest speaker, Mrs. Bustin, to deliver the presentation. It is over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Jayasena. Hello, uh, Mr. Suresh Dilmel, and of course, our uh, dear ambassador of Sri Lanka to Israel. And I'm joining uh, Mr. Nehushtan's words to uh, congratulate you on the very hard work that you're doing to promote business and relations in general between Israel and Sri Lanka. And um, I, I can say that you are among the best ambassadors that we have seen um, over the so many years. So congratulate you. And it's good to give credit to, to a person and to the audience we have today. Um, I'll open my presentation. One second, please. It's so, all right. It's, it, all right. Uh, it's, it's clear your presentation is okay. We can see. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So a few words about uh, our Chamber of Commerce. And whereas Mr. Nehushtan is part of the Federation of all the Chambers of Commerce, we are part of the B-National 
Chambers of Commerce. It's a different organization uh, founded in uh, 84. So we are going to celebrate 40 years very soon. And we were founded by the ministries, whether it's the foreign, the, the uh, Ministry of Economy, Ministry of Finance in Israel, to promote trade between Israel and Asia. In 84, the state of Israel understood that it's not enough to look at our traditional markets, the US and Europe, and founded our chamber. We cover 16 Asian countries, uh, including India, China, Philippines, uh, and Nepal, and of course, Sri Lanka. I'm heading uh, both India and Sri Lanka Chamber of Commerce. We work closely with the Asian embassies, both in Israel and our uh, missions in Asia. Uh, for Sri Lanka, of course, we collaborate with the Honorary Consul, which is based in uh, Sri Lanka, and the Israeli Embassy in Delhi, which uh, is in charge of Sri Lanka as well. Uh, some of our activities are delegations, whether hosting delegations, and we are eager to have a, a delegation from Sri Lanka coming, and I hope that uh, soon uh, we will be able to do it. We led few delegations over the years to Sri Lanka pre-COVID. Uh, myself, I led three uh, delegations and uh, we collaborated with EDB on those delegations. So you've been a great partner to us. Uh, we conduct B2B newsletter seminars like this, whether it's to our members or to uh, Asian countries. We also handle conflict resolution in many times uh, exporters, importers, or business partners from Asia and Israel uh, have difficulties communicating or settling uh, their conflict. We assist them because we understand both parties. We give our uh, members training and we expose even the, uh, the Asian diplomatic board in Israel to the Israel industry and innovation ecosystem. Your ambassador was part uh, to our uh, ambassador trip where we take the ambassadors of Asia to see uh, Israeli uh, industry and of course uh, companies. Please mark uh, our website for more information or if you'd like to, to contact us. Myself, uh, I'm in my uh, public posting. I'm uh, head of the Israel Sri Lanka Chamber of Commerce and vice president, as you said, of the entire Israel Asia. But in my public, uh, in my private capacity, I'm CEO of the Gate to Business, a company within the BDO Israel Group, a consulting, one of the largest consulting firms in Israel. And I'm sure that you're aware of the BDO network also in Sri Lanka. Uh, so doing business in Israel, what does it mean? First, to the ease of doing business, we are ranked 35. And I'm proud to, to say it, we Israelis are always, uh, criticizing our uh, government and the systems, but when we compare it, it's not that bad to be number 35 out of almost 200 uh, countries. The economic growth for, for this year will be 5%. So maybe it's a uh, rebounds uh, after the COVID, but still by itself, it's a nice, uh, very nice growth, I would say. The currency in Israel is called shekel, or new shekel as we call it. And the, the conversion is uh, one shekel, or let's say uh, $1 is 3.5 shekels. So do the math how it is to uh, the Indian rupee, uh, to the Sri Lankan rupee. Um, about opening a company, I know that many of you are exporters from Sri Lanka, but in case you would like also to set shop in Israel, it's quite simple and it's we can also do it uh, online the most common structure is a private limited company the minimum requirements are very simple no minimum capital i've seen uh, opening companies in other countries where you need to put capital here you don't need to put anything uh, one director is enough it doesn't need to be even a shareholder you can have one shareholder there is a structure for only one shareholder and you need an Israeli address. And also foreign uh, entities can register here, but the only major requirement that there should be some Israeli with the power of attorney to work on behalf of this company. So opening a company is quite straightforward. 
also taking money out when, I mean, you open a company, you also want to do business and take it back to your uh, home country. So like any other place, you can take it as dividend. There is, of course, tax taxation. You can give a loan to the company and then do repayment of loan. It's okay to give a loan to your own company, shareholders loan. It's common. You don't need to take necessarily a loan from an Israeli bank to start a business. You can bring your own money and you can uh, repatriate also as royalties or management services. Very straightforward way of repatriating money. Uh, talking about visa, and I'm going to refer both to tourist and business visa for a temporary visit. visit. Uh, there is a center in Sri Lanka and you can copy their address and their, uh, they're based in Colombo, which they process the visa on behalf of Israel. Uh, no paper visa is available those days. There were times that Israel was not in good terms with many of the Gulf countries. So people pre asked to get a paper visa. This, uh, this is not available anymore, especially because we have good relations today with Bahrain, with uh, UAE, as Or mentioned. I hope that soon also Saudi will establish relations. So uh, the only um, non, uh, I would say, uh, friendly countries to Israel still are Syria, Iraq, and maybe Pakistan. But the rest, we are uh, quite, and of course, Iran, and the rest are quite okay. So. Uh, the visa, as you see here, is stamped on your passport. When we're talking about um, expert visa, this is a bit challenging because uh, not very, uh, not many are getting expert visa. The, the requirements are more difficult. It is uh, up to five years. So if you start your business, you'll get an expert visa to to uh, manage your business, but you need to keep in mind that you cannot stay here for longer than five years. We saw a Sri Lankan company that opened a business in Israel, and it was challenging for the founders to stay in Israel because after five years, he couldn't stay here permanently and he had to commute back. So maybe it's better if you'd like to st start a business in Israel, start it with a, a local partner that lives here and the Sri Lankan partner will commute. A work visa is, uh, expert visa will be done by the Israeli employer to the immigration authority and work visa uh, will be done by the agencies that uh, hire you. It goes to the embassy, our embassy in New Delhi. And uh, I know of many caregivers from Sri Lanka that work in Israel and they get work visa. And uh, I know that uh, the, 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 the Israeli community is very happy with the Sri Lankan caregivers that are coming here and they support our elderly and, and uh, other uh, people that need uh, help. One second. Uh, or men mentioned uh, the sectors in Israel I think that those seven topics would be the major topics for collaboration. And I'm not mentioning diamonds because diamonds, I don't see much uh, value added. I think that we need and we should collaborate on agri-tech, water, energy, and energy today is renewable energy, digital health, food tech. Food tech in Israel is extremely big sector now. Uh, somehow we became capital of food tech. Many companies that are developing new protein solution, uh, fishless, fishless fish, meatless meat, eggless egg, a lot of uh, products that are replacing the, the regular beef, which is extremely tasty. And if you have a vegetarian a community, uh, the food tech industry can be very important. Uh, also milk, I know for many years, uh, uh, Sri Lanka was using milk powder instead of milk. Milk is now developed in Israeli labs to replace the regular cow milk. And the taste is very similar. 
also very nutritious with very high protein content. I suggest that you look at the Israeli food tech and sick collaboration, whether to manufacturing in Sri Lanka or to uh, distribute it in Sri Lanka. Cybersecurity, and you've seen uh, the numbers mentioned by Or and in my next slide, and mobility. Somehow Israel grew to be a capital of the electric vehicle, of the autonomous vehicle. Many startups and companies are working around this space, uh, just to name a very famous one, Mobili, which uh, is giving autonomous solutions and sensors, and many others are in this space, whether it's energy for mobility or storage or other uh, solutions, materials. Uh, do look at mobility in Israel. It can be a very important collaboration also to manufacture in Sri Lanka. Just to give you uh, some numbers where the investment in startups went in the past couple of years, and this is uh, a diagram I took from Startup Nation Central in a minute, I'll mention them, and see that Israel invested investing in IT in security, cyber security, fintech. I don't know why we became uh, almost like Switzerland in fintech. A lot of solutions in the fintech space, payments. Uh, again, I urge you to look at this uh, area, life science and, and retail uh, marketing, and again, uh, IT solutions. One sec. Uh, take a snapshot of this. Uh, slide because it will give you good resources uh, for identifying partners and working in Israel in general. Whether it's our website and you're welcome to approach uh, our Chamber of Commerce, the Expert Institute of Israel that belongs to the Ministry of Economy, the Manufacturers Association that is a umbrella body for all industries, uh, industrialists in Israel, the federation represented here today by Mr. Nekushtan, Startup Nation Central, which is a database of all the startups in Israel. Great uh, website to uh, dig uh, for new opportunities and new startups. Uh, if you want listings of companies, the BDI code website gives you also in English lists of companies, and I'm using it very often. Um, to, to find who are the best 10 companies in Israel. The problem in websites uh, in Israel that we use Hebrew. So when you look for things, most of the things will be in Hebrew. So uh, the BDI listing is also in English will be very helpful to you. All the websites that I'm mentioning here, of course, also give you a, an English uh, interface. There is, uh, I know that we have here travel agencies here. So there is the Israeli Association of Travel Agencies that you can approach or the Israel Diamond Exchange, uh, which uh, I'm, I know that several of the uh, Sri Lankan business people know and vice versa. Uh, the Diamond is in Israel have uh, offices and facilities in Sri Lanka. Few more things that I wanted to bring to your attention when we talk about ease of doing business. Uh, when you export to Israel, uh, some of the things need to go via the Standards Institute. Uh, there is a reform in Israel and there is a fast, fast track for products that already have international certification. And soon there will be another institute competing with the official institute. So standards is gradually becoming less uh, difficult to achieve in Israel. Uh, for the food people uh, in the audience, um, I, I, I believe that when you do food, you need to be aware of the notion which is called kosher. And kosher is important when you export to Israel. Kosher is actually a religious way of uh, treating food, but also, uh, uh, there are foods which are kosher and there are foods which are not kosher according to the Jewish Bible. So I'll give you an example. A tuna fish is kosher. Shrimp is not kosher. If you process uh, a product and you combine dairy ingredients and, and um, beef and meat ingredients, it's not kosher. According to the Judaism, you are not allowed to combine uh, meat and dairy products together. And there are other rules 
there are agencies that are handling kosher certification, even uh, kosher Sri Lanka managed by the Chabad house uh, in Sri Lanka is able to give you gu guidance, but also certification. Look up, those are just few that I picked from the leading uh, agencies. This is the symbol, the youth symbol is the symbol of kosher food. When you uh, export to Israel, there will be uh, communities, the religious communities, but several other that require their food uh, to be uh, a co marked kosher, which means that the process was uh, following kosher uh, requirements. Uh, I know that there are, uh, as I said, food people in the audience. Those are the leading retailers in Israel. I suggest that you approach them directly or contact our chamber and we will connect you to them. Many of them uh, will be difficult to manage because they speak only Hebrew or their main organization speaks Hebrew. Take our assistance. We will be happy to uh, connect them, uh, you to them. Why Sri Lanka? And uh, both of us are very small uh, countries. And I, I don't know if it's politically correct to give this picture of the former president. So apologies if I'm doing something wrong. But your president visited our uh, president uh, several years back. And Sri Lanka is important to Israel. We have similar interests. We both countries look at tourism, agriculture, water, renewable energy. We have common interests. Sri Lanka is a gate to additional markets. For example, we don't have access to Malaysia and Sri Lanka has very good relations with Malaysia. Israeli companies can come to Sri Lanka, do a value addition or assembly and export to markets that we cannot uh, access at the moment. Sri Lanka has manufacturing capabilities, which is excellent for Israeli products. From diplomatic perspective, we are a strategic alliance and our defense relations for so many years were excellent, are continuing to, the, to, the, to today. Um, or started to talk about the business culture. And I'm saying that in, in order to enjoy the similarities between us, we need to understand the difference. And the Israeli business is in a hurry. Okay, we don't have time. When you ask an Israeli when you want something, he will reply to you yesterday, not tomorrow or the day after. It's a joke that we say we would like it yesterday. We don't have time. We are rushing to do business. We are talking straight to the point, no small talk. As uh, Or mentioned, you can consider it rude, but this is the directness that make us uh, prosper and get things going. Israeli business people are go-getters. They don't have time for small talk and to, to be your friend. Later, they will be your friend and later they will have small talk, but first they will talk to you business. Uh, here, time is money. For the Israeli business person, it's, it's nice to talk. It's nice to negotiate. I'm saying that the Israeli business people are often negotiators because they don't have the time to negotiate. They'll very quickly give you the best offer in order to progress. Don't take the best offer as a starting point. The Israeli, when he tells you it's the best offer, probably he means it and he wants to progress. Take it into consideration. Another thing that is different between us and important to note is that when a Sri Lankan will talk, he will allow the other to talk, he will listen, and then he will react. When Israeli talks, he will not let you talk. And sometimes a uh, Sri Lankan will take it as a rude thing uh, from the Israelis. Well, this is how we are. It's good to be aware that this is the culture. And uh, I wouldn't say appreciate it, but understand it. We are not uh, high, uh, based on hierarchy. We are going straight to the point. We can talk to our boss or our juniors can talk to us freely, directly. 
We don't need to go uh, the ladder to reach the decision-making. The decision-making is very fast. If I have something, uh, if my uh, junior has something to tell me, he will come straight to me without any uh, fear that I'm uh, superior to him. We are a flat society and also it uh, reflects in the business culture. So if I want to summer, uh, summarize uh, the differences, whereas we need patience in uh, Sri Lanka, Israelis are totally impatient. We don't follow hierarchy. We don't follow process. We are very direct, sometimes too direct, but I saw many Sri Lankan people that love our directness because there is no small talk. There is no uh, subtext. There is no hidden agenda. We talk to the face, we say what we want and business with us takes very quickly. Quick decision-making and negotiation, as I said, very quick in a sense that we don't want to waste time on going back and forth and negotiating. We want to get going. Therefore, I'm saying that we are a bad negotiator because we don't take the time to negotiate. So enjoy it or understand it. Um, there is a word that you should be aware of in the Israeli culture, which is some people call it the secret sauce. What makes the Israeli move? And it's called the chutzpah. It can be rudeness. It can be audacity. There is even a, a recent book that was written about why Israel is a hub of innovation. And uh, this book theme is that the chutzpah, the directness, the rudeness sometimes is uh, the base for our success. Thank you for uh, your time. I'll be happy. Uh, and also Mr. Nechushtan will be happy to take uh, your questions. You can take uh, my direct uh, mobile number and my email and also the chambers uh, coordinates. And uh, we will be happy to connect you to the Israeli ecosystem and take it forward. I look forward to being in Sri Lanka. I just need to mention that myself, I'm committed to Sri Lanka. I bought uh, a land in Sri Lanka a few years back and I'm waiting for all the hassle to uh, be easier and then we will be able to develop this land to create uh, an Israeli showcase of technologies uh, uh, resort. So thank you for having me and uh, the floor is back to you, Mr. Jayasena. Yes, uh, thank you for the, that excellent presentation and uh, summarize uh, uh, so that you explained about uh, public online resources of the identified partners in Israel, Israel business uh, culture, sectors of collaboration, uh, how to do business with Israel and business etiquette, and uh, with uh, and many many uh, many many uh, uh, active, many many information. I think most of questions uh, uh, can answer. You know that there are questions already replied by uh, both of uh, your experts uh, in this uh, presentation, and uh, and also I think most of questions. Raised by uh, now, now we are coming to the third part. Uh, we come to the last part of our webinar. This is to answer the, that your questions uh, you raised by the registration form, especially for the companies. Uh, if they are re registration, they ask that uh, many questions, <clears throat> and we summarize uh, this question. And I think most of uh, the questions raised by the exporters have already covered by these two. Uh, presentation. In addition to that, I, I will raise below question uh, selected. Uh, first question, uh, maybe most of uh, companies ask, what are the opportunities available for Sri Lankan spices, especially cinnamon? Do you, uh, cinnamon uh, due to the G GI certificate, coconut products, tea and processed foods. Uh, they ask about the opportunities. Uh, any of us uh, can answer uh, this question? Thank you. Yeah, I'd be happy to answer uh, in, in general. Um, and thank you, uh, Mr. Prasama. I think in general, when you want to access a new market, Israel or any other market, you need to start by research. Research of what your product is, how much of consumption does the target market have for your product? Who are the competitors? 
and who are people importing from. Uh, so because you're talking about several different industries all in one, I, I reviewed the questions myself. We get a lot of uh, people, a lot of companies approach us through our system asking to promote Cylon tea, asking to promote coconut oil products, uh, asking to promote uh, other, other textile products or, or for fertilizer from coconut or from Sri Lanka. And, and again, that is because of the good work of the embassy, which we've told you about uh, earlier in facilitating the connection between us and Sri Lankan companies. I think the first point of call, if you don't mind me saying, should still be the embassy. The embassy should be uh, able to access the customs data, the Israeli customs data, to be able to tell you how much cinnamon, just as an example, is being imported into Israel, how much of that cinnamon is from Sri Lanka. And then again, this is up to the, each company and their own research. Because if you see that there is a lot of cinnamon ex being e exported from Sri Lanka to Israel, does that mean that there is room for the market? Does that mean that the Israeli market is looking for more Sri Lankan cinnamon manufacturers and exporters? I don't know. That is something for the company to decide. Maybe you would want to focus on another item that Israel imports little of from Sri Lanka. So try to investigate that. Why is there so little uh, import to Israel from Sri Lanka on that se separate item? Maybe that is an opportunity. I can only tell you that we will be able through our system to uh, enable you to advertise your opportunity through our system. After that, it will come down to our members. If they go on the website, if they search for Sri Lanka products, if they search specifically for spices or cinnamon or anything else. So we have the platform to, be, to allow you to promote your products. After that, it will come down to the interest of the companies. I also saw some questions about personal contact details and so on. Um, I cannot share, I'm afraid, my WhatsApp number or my mobile number uh, because it's my own personal uh, number. I will be happy to share the email with you. But again, because the embassy is doing such good work and they are such close partners with us, they help us receive the opportunities in a very orderly fashion. We get the form on a Word document or a PDF document. I'm sorry for touching these technicalities. It's just that I want you all, after the end of this webinar, to, to have the same expectations. We don't have the capacity to deal with every request uh, personally. That's why the, we developed our business opportunity system, uh, which the embassy knows very, very well. So you'll be able to get the form from them or from us and just send it to us for us to process the information. It may take a few days or a couple of weeks, but then we promise that your offer would be uploaded. Um, and again, I know that many of the questions here are how to uh, enter the Israeli market. Um, I, again, it will always come down to the research. You, unfortunately, will have to research, research yourself who are the main distributors of your products, who are the main companies that import spices from Asia and maybe specifically from Sri Lanka, who are the main brand names for spices in Israel, for instance, or for coconut oil. When I first started this job just over a, a year ago, I received many requests about tea and coconut oil from Sri Lanka. And then one of Israel's biggest food retailers approached me, they are FICC members. They approached me and said, we are looking for tea from Sri Lanka. I said, great, I have just the companies for you. And I immediately send them five Sri Lankan company for them to review their offer, get in touch with them and see. Now, later on, they finalized the deal with one of those companies. But the four other companies that approached and I told them, I introduced them to this big retailer. Uh, they said, what's going on? We are looking to get into the Israeli market. You can't uh, win them all. Eventually, our member found the right supplier and that's who they did business with. Following that, I received many more offers of tea and of coconut oil. There is not a lot of demand. There is more uh, supply from Sri Lanka than the Israeli demand. So that is something, those two, two things that I can tell you, sometimes opportunities arise and they are perfect for you. But most of the time, there isn't that much of demand for these things. And last but not least, I want to touch on uh, the preservatives and canned goods, fish, tuna, everything else. Again, like many other things, there are about three or four major companies in Israel that are the key distributors 
of these products, of these articles into the Israeli market. And I know for a fact that they import from Thailand and they import from Vietnam and they are looking to import, at least one of them is looking to import for the Philippines. There is no reason for Sri Lankan exporters not to be on their list, not to be on their radar. You can, we can help you uh, be on their radar through our business opportunity system. But again, it will come down to each and every one of you, the Sri Lankan excellent exporters, do the research, get the help of your foreign office and your uh, uh, Ministry of Economy to get you the data from the Israeli customs or any other country you're interested in to understand the supply and demand there yourself. And then we can help you facilitate the opportunity uh, later on. Yeah. Uh, thank you for, uh, thank you, Mr. O, about the, the answers of, uh, for uh, exporters. And thank you for, uh, thank you. And uh, uh, first, uh, be, be, before that, uh, I want to, I request uh, all the participants to fill up uh, the evaluation form, which will appear in your screen. And uh, uh, next, uh, any, uh, any addition to, uh, Mrs. Uh, Burstein, for the this uh, question, any answers for the your the point of view about any answers of uh, questions? Or I, I, I think that uh, talking about food, I think that Mr. Lechustan uh, gave uh, the right answer. I'm not sure that the Israeli market uh, is big enough to uh, so many good spices that are coming from Sri Lanka. I think personally that the tea that uh, reaches uh, Israel is uh, not good enough. Probably it doesn't come from Sri Lanka. And I would be happy if we will have more Sri Lankan tea in Israel and Sri Lankan brands that usually I bring uh, myself from Sri Lanka. Um, and I, I think that the way to collaborate is to collaborate with the retailers that I mentioned on my list and many more that you can find contact them and even do white label. It doesn't matter what is the label, as long as the quality is a Sri Lankan tea uh, quality. Because in, in, in Israel, I guess, uh, the tea that reaches here is, uh, is not good enough. It's not in a good uh, quality, what we find in uh, our markets. And uh, I'll be happy if the tea importers in the audience will make an effort to, uh, get into the Israeli market, we can help you by connecting to those retailers. From there, uh, of course, you'll have to be competitive in price and uh, find uh, commercial terms with the retailers, but I'm sure that they'll be happy to get quality tea that Sri Lanka can give. Uh, I, I would add, uh, first, first of all, I, I do agree as a tea connoisseur myself, I think what we have in Israel is is uh, not of the, the quality that can be reached. But uh, something is very important to add as well. Uh, specifically in tea, there is one main Israeli company that everybody knows that I won't mention. Uh, everybody knows the biggest company of tea in Israel. Uh, it, will, it is difficult to reach them sometimes. They, just like any other food retailer in Israel, they are open to new offers and open to new opportunities. But there's a difference between looking for and being open to. Once they are looking for new things, they approach myself, maybe they approach the Israel Asia Chamber of Commerce as well, and they ask us to uh, try and help them find suppliers and providers. Uh, but if they are only open for new offers, then we really need to push hard for them to uh, be exposed to these offers. And I also want to say one more thing about gems and jewelry. Uh, again, Israel is a leading market in those fields, but it is also a saturated market. Having said that, we are in touch with uh, the union of uh, jewelers in Israel. And sometimes we send them offers. Sometimes it's more relevant. Sometimes it's not. Any specific industry, we have someone that we can reach. Will they be open to new offers from Sri Lanka? That is up to you. And lastly, again, we mentioned the Abraham Accords. Shipping costs are very crucial at this time. They are coming down a bit by 5%, maybe 7%, but experts say that they will never come down to the prices that were before COVID. So the shipping expenses can really affect your products. I know that in agricultural goods, Sri Lanka it competes with Thailand, competes with Vietnam, competes with other uh, Asian countries. 
I think one of the key things that exporters needs to understand before they attempt exporting to Israel or the European uh, market is what the shipping costs might be. And you need to make uh, your products come in bulk to lower the shipping costs, and that might be able, uh, might, might help you to succeed. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, uh, Mr. Nehustan, for, for your uh, further, further answers. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, before concluding, I will um, invite uh, Excellency uh, for final, uh, final remarks. Sir. Thank you very much. Uh, and first of all, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Suresh Dimel for, for uh, collaborating us with uh, uh, to organize this semi, uh, semi webinar and then also uh, Dr. Anad Bernstein Reich and uh, Mr. Noor, uh, Mr. Orr, uh, for agreeing to take part at the uh, webinar to um, um, uh, give uh, uh, give an idea of uh, how how uh, uh, the Israel market works and, and uh, what are the opportunities available for Sri Lankans, uh, uh, Sri Lankan exporters to uh, penetrate into the market. Thank you so much. This is, uh, as I said, uh, one of our um, few ways of collaborating uh, um, to, to improve uh, bilateral trade with, uh, between Sri Lanka and Israel. We have many, uh, many other um, arrangements uh, to promote and help uh, Sri Lankan exporters uh, together with uh, Israel Sri Lanka Chamber of Commerce and FICC and Asia uh, Israel Chamber of Commerce. Um, as I said before, uh, the embassy stand ready to assist any Sri Lankan exporter who is willing to and wishing uh, who is uh, um, trying to uh, access the Israeli market for the first time. We are, there, we are here to help and uh, please contact us through EDB or, or direct, uh, directly uh, and we will get you connected with the relevant uh, partners in Israel. Uh, of course, uh, in collaboration with our, our partner, long-standing partners. I hope, uh, um, most of uh, you gained something new uh, through this uh, informative sub webinar. And, and, uh, and uh, the EDB is also planning uh, to conduct uh, sector-specific uh, uh, webinar series uh, in future. So we will collaborate with the EDB uh, uh, and of course with, uh, with our, our partners here. And uh, looking forward to uh, help you uh, reaching the Israeli market. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, thank you once again, EDP. Thank you once again, uh, Sri Lanka, Israel Sri Lanka Chamber of Commerce and Federation of uh, Israeli Chambers of Commerce, especially Dr. Anad and uh, Mr. Orr, uh, Prasanna and uh, uh, Mr. Suresh Dimel and uh, everybody else in, uh, in EDB and all the participants. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Excellency. <laughs> and the word of uh, our director, Mrs. Anoma Prematilaka, for uh, uh, oh, I, I forgot. I forgot to mention her name. She had been a long, long, uh, long standing partner and friend. Thank you, Anoma, for all your support during, uh, during last. Uh, Two and a half years. Thank you so much. Thank you, Excellency. So, on behalf of the uh, Export Development Board, I would like to propose a word of thanks. Uh, first of all, I uh, would like to thank uh, Excellency uh, Varunavil Pater, the Ambassador of Sri Lanka in Israel, uh, for organizing this event with the uh, partners in Israel. Uh, thank you, Excellency, for all your support uh, together with the staff. Uh, and then uh, secondly, I would like to uh, sincerely thank uh, our two resource persons. Uh, they have done a wonderful job today. Uh, Mr. O, uh, uh, Business Development Executive and EEN, International Relations Division, uh, 
Federation of Israel Chamber of Commerce, uh, and also uh, Mrs. Uh, Annette, uh, Chairperson, Israel Sri Lanka Chamber of Commerce, and Vice President, Israel Asia Chamber of Commerce. Uh, thank you for your contributions. Uh, I think our uh, exporters got a lot of uh, insights uh, into the market and how to do business with Israel. Uh, we can continue this dialogue as our ambassador mentioned. Uh, thank you very much. So, uh, and I also thank our participants. Uh, we, we saw that uh, there were a lot of uh, interest from Sri Lankan companies and they are here with us, more than 100 uh, are still there. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your interest, uh, interest in this market. Uh, we hope we can have uh, better exports, uh, as, uh, that is our uh, objective. So we will uh, try to support uh, uh, you together with the uh, Sri Lanka Embassy and also the uh, other partners in Israel. Uh, last uh, but not least, I, I would like to thank our team in EDB, uh, Prasanna, uh, Dinushika, Menaka, uh, for organizing this from this end, and also our able IT team. Uh, uh, their, their background support is uh, very important to organize this event. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, with that, I conclude this session. Uh, wish you a, a good day, everyone. I over one. I go. Thank you.